about 7.09, I'd like to actually call the regular portion of our meeting to order. The first thing we'll do tonight is I'll ask everyone to stand. And if Councilman Underwood could lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you. Um, so tonight we do have a couple presentations. Uh, our first one, we're very lucky. We have uh, Mr. Lucas Grafton here for a certificate of recognition. Uh, Lucas is looking to earn his Eagle Scout and he did a very special project for us in town. I'm gonna hand it off to uh, Vice Chairwoman Moranti, who's gonna present you with your certificate and give uh, a little bit more information about what Lucas did for us. So please, Lucas, if you'll join uh, Councilwoman Moranti up at the podium. Hey, let me tell you a little bit about Lucas and what he has done at Paderewski Park. Uh, he's uh, completing his Eagle Scout community project and that's one of the requirements for a Boy Scout to attain the Eagle Scout rank. He's with Scout Troop 425. And on March 4th, Lucas completed his Eagle Scout project, which was to build and install eight bat houses uh, located at four parks in town. The two houses at Paderewski Park. Three bat houses were also installed on trees in Norton Park. Two houses at Tommaso Nature Park and one house at Trumbull Park, so we have all of them covered, yeah. Uh, he worked with some local businesses to get materials donated. Several bat species are listed as endangered under the Connecticut Endangered Species Act. One reason the bat population is declining is due to loss of habitat. Bat houses help bats to survive. So that's quite an accomplishment and a lot of work. And we are giving Lucas tonight a certificate of recognition, and I'm going to read it. This certificate of recognition is presented to Lucas Grafton in recognition of his outstanding community service and dedication to conservation and environmental protection through the construction and installation of suitable and safe nesting habitat for declining bat populations in Plainville, Connecticut. Dated on this 18th day of March 2024 from the Plainville Town Council, Christopher Wazorko, Chairman, Rosemary Moranti, Vice Chairwoman, woman, Quinn Christopher, Benjamin Gediman, Daniel Hurley, Deborah Tompkins, and David Underwood. And congratulations, Lucas, and thank you. Uh, did you want to say anything? No. Okay. <laughs> and just real quick, Lucas, congratulations. Here's a little, uh, just a little pin for you, a Plainville pin that you can uh, take with you. We appreciate you being here tonight. Um, and feel free, if you think there's another project in town that you think needs to be done, yeah. feel free to contact us. We'll, we'll be happy to talk. But thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. Uh, so now we get to move on to our second presentation tonight. Element 119 is here. Good evening, everyone. Nice to see everyone again. Um, Yes, just make sure you talk into the microphone. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, well, ladies and gentlemen of the council, Madam Mr. Chairperson, Madam Vice Chairperson, thank you very much for having us here tonight to give a presentation. Um, I'm here tonight with uh, Mark Sullivan, Chief Operating Officer, and the President and CEO and Founder, Andrew Zeppa. So tonight, um, we're happy to report that we, you know, we're looking at the town of Plainville to relocate our facilities into. Um, we began our operations in 2010. Um, pretty much it was run as a home run business in 2010 until about 2017 when the first employees were hired. Um, at that time, we added, you know, Andrew had brought on four employees. Um, two years later, we were about maybe 12, 13 employees, and today we're over for about 47 and growing, even stronger. So a lot about, little bit about Element 119. We're an advanced coatings manufacturing um, 
organization. We manufacture all of our stuff in the United States. We sell to aerospace, um, motor vehicles, uh, and, and automotive, and marine coatings. Um, Mark's going to talk a little bit about our history when he comes up here to speak in a little bit. Um, but one of the things that I will say is that we're relocating um, for expansion to bring all of our operations under one roof. Again, as I said, in 2018, we were both locations. We had administrative and we had warehousing in Thomaston. We grew in about 2021. We opened our administrative offices over in Cheshire because we were growing at a rapid pace. And today, we um, believe we found our home here in Plainville. So as a result of that, um, a couple things about Element 119. Um, Element 119 is, again, as I said, advanced manufacturing, uh, coatings manufacturer. Um, last year, we were the SBA S um, business, small business exporter of the year for all of New England. Um, no easy feat, but again, obviously our growing international presence as well. Uh, the second thing is, is that we were one of the top 70 businesses in the United States by the U.S. Chamber of Commerce um, last year. And um, we were given the first jobs, Connecticut Jobs um, CT program through Governor Lamont's office to, for our expansion and um, growth efforts here in Connecticut. Um, we continue to expand as we grow, and that's why we're looking at the facility we are. Um, we're going to be probably quadrupling, maybe make even more of the footprint. Um, so a couple of things that we could tell you is that our sales are over $10 million annually, um, and we grow 20 to 30% a year uh, currently. With that said, um, not only are we a coatings manufacturing company, but we're also a research and development company um, in that aspect. Um, currently, we are working with four different um, small business innovation research grants, phase two with the United States Air Force. We've had those um, contracts since um, 2019. Um, just in the past year, we've received three new contracts. Value of those contracts is over four and a half million dollars. We anticipate currently additional probably two to three this year and more next year with between the U.S. Army, National Institutes of Standards and Technology, as well as Department of Energy. So we're not just in military, we're also doing for all the um, various aspects of the federal government as well as state. Um, with that said, um, the average wage of all of our employees currently is 20% greater in the Hartford area in the, marine, in, in the median of the Plainville wage. Um, as I said before, the uh, median average wage of Plainville is about $48,305. Our average wage as of 2023 was 61326 per employee, are given about 21.2% higher. Um, furthermore, we'll be also adding a couple other business venues that have come along with that. We have um, artificial intelligence company. We have a couple other things that maybe Mark might want to touch on. But we also see that added benefit, too, to the Plainville community. We would be adding roughly about $180,000 a year, just averaging a per, per what employees spend a week just on gas, food, whatever else, in the Plainville community. So we'd be adding that a year. Um, we'd be looking to move over all the employees within a year's time a lot sooner. Um, I think there's some areas where we're looking at when, when we close on the facility in regards to how fast we can move in, because there's obviously some renovations that have to take place and some logistics um, in that area there. Um, with that, I'm going to turn it over, I think, to Mark Sullivan, Chief Operating Officer, where he can elaborate a little bit further. Thank you. Thank you. That young kid started this in his garage. <laughs> Very well put, Dave. Thank you. <laughs> Now, this, this is a hard uh, act to follow, Dave and Lucas. I yeah. hope someday I can earn a Plainville pen. I don't know yeah, what I have to do to, to do Just because you're last, don't take it personally. Yeah. <laughs> I got a long way to go. <laughs> um, so Element 119, um, I sat last week and uh, I thought about it at the end of the week. We hired two more employees just last week. Uh, we're now up to 49 employees. Uh, which is a far cry from when I joined the company just a touch over three years ago. Um, and I started to look around and I thought, we have some Gen Xers. Um, we also have some millennials. We have a surprising number of Gen Zers working for us. We have a very, very young workforce. One of the things I've come to notice when I talk to the Gen Zers that work for us is they don't just want a job. They want to work in a company that does something that helps the environment that they can talk to their friends about and, and 
they can basically be proud of working here. Um, we are a zero waste chemical company. As a matter of fact, I mean, Dave talked about it. We do uh, chemical coatings. Not the sexiest thing in the world, and certainly not something that you tell all your friends, oh, yes, I work for a chemical company. But if you follow it up with, we also work for a zero waste chemical company, everything that comes in the door gets used, nothing goes down the drain. Um, it makes them a little more proud of, of what we do. Um, we also, I mean, the things that we use, most of the chemicals we use are deionized water. You can drink it. Um, we use silicon, not silicone, not the rubberized stuff. Um, silicon is the second most abundant element on the face of the earth, next to oxygen. It's everywhere. It's in the beach sand that you see everywhere. It makes up the entire floor of the, of the ocean, all of the oceans. And it's even in that black volcanic sand that you see on some beaches. Um, if you know a little bit about chemistry, you know why. It, it's made of silicon, but it has feldspar in it, which makes it black. Anyway, um, we're very, very proud of our company. We've grown leaps and bounds. I myself grew up in the Connecticut River Valley, spent 27 years in Colorado, and Andrew Zeppa, the owner of our company, talked me into moving back to the Connecticut area to help run this company. Uh, could not be prouder of what's happened in the short time that I've been involved. Andrew just started the company 12, 13 years ago in his garage, like Dave said. Um, leaps and bounds since then. At one point, we doubled our revenue every single year for a four, almost a five-year stretch. Um, we really, really have been growing so fast, and we just want to find a home where we can we can have something to, to build on in a community to be part of. We think we found that in Plainville. We love it here. Um, having operations in Thomaston and Cheshire and now being able to bring it under one roof, huge, huge benefit to us. Now, great place that we're moving into because it's right next to Robertson Airport. Um, Dave talked a little bit about the government grants that we are constantly going after. Um, we've got six SBIRs right now, Small Business Innovation Research Grants that we've already been granted. And Dave can correct me, I believe there's at least another dozen in the hopper that may come to fruition in the next two to three years. Um, we can also help the town of Plainville because there's an airport development zone around Robertson Airport and we do plan to go after those grants as well. Um, that can be used for many, many different things. It can be used for private businesses. It can be used for community development. Um, also, it's funny that we, get, we got here a little bit early. I wanted to see uh, where the bike path was going through downtown. We already know where it's going through north of downtown. It's going to go right. We're going to give up some of our land. It's going to go right through our land. Um, very, very happy to do that. We want to be good stewards of the community. Um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to any questions. I'll wait here for anyone who has questions about our company. Um, Andrew is also available. He's the owner of the company, also our chief chemist. He does all the formulations. <laughs> um, but with that, I'll turn it over if anybody has questions specifically for us. So, yeah, so any, uh, I know, I think we're going to, talk about element 119 a couple more times in the meeting but is there any questions or any comments anyone wants to make i mean i'll just welcome it's nice to i mean i've talked to some of you already but it's nice to meet you um we may have some more questions as we get into the meeting i believe we're under the town manager's report we'll be talking a little bit about the company and what we're trying to do here so i know you're not going anywhere anytime soon so sounds good and we yeah. i know you gave us 15 or so min minutes but we know you're running a little late so oh that's all i right. cut my comments a little short just so we can move it along yes, I, i'm known for long meetings so it's not anything that uh, everybody's used to uh, we would also just like to thank the um individuals in the community here um as well the town manager mr paulus um andy Sroli, town attorney um mark and um, Cal, they've been great in regards to helping us, um, you know, 
make the decision a lot more easier. Um, I also We also met with the fire marshal, Mark, right? You and I met with the fire marshal as well as a building official, and we think that, you know, your, your staff is really well. Um, well, thank you. Very good, and we, we really appreciate you also with your um, time and your efforts. Um, just one other statistic I'll just tell you. Last year, we spent 13,624 hours in research and development. Um, we anticipate this year to be approximately fifteen to 20,000. So, again, as I said, that's another avenue to where we're growing in. Thank well, thank you. Mr. Chairman, if I yes. may uh, and ask David to come back. Um, just... Uh, <laughs> I think one of the one of the uh, maybe I missed I, maybe I missed it I didn't hear it but the um, issue around growth and expansion right mm -hmm. uh, so that we we've had an opportunity to to have a dialogue and exchange and what it, I think is exciting is the fact that not only is it an acquisition and a, a uh, merger, if you will, of, of two locations coming here to one, uh, but that their growth story, I think, lends itself to uh, future expansion in a few short years, I would hope. And, and that's, I think, what we'd all be hoping for. And I don't know if you wanted to uh, elaborate yeah. on that. Yeah. And um, basically, when we were looking at any, we, we've looked probably at a good 30, 40, maybe even 50 different locations um, in the general area, because obviously we're a company, we're growing, we also want to keep it with the employee base, we're looking in this general area for a period of time. So one of the other things that we came across is a location that also has flexibility to grow, to be expanded upon. And um, the current location next to the airport offers that flexibility. Um, I believe when we spoke to the town um, planner here that we did have some opportunities where there was a previous footprint for an expansion at the time with that other facility of about, I think it was approximately 100,000 square feet, give or take we can see potentially moving into that footprint in the next several years. I mean, just given our current trajectory and plus just one of these grants, if it gives you know, credence, which we anticipate one of them will do very soon, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna snowball into something where we have to uh, get more space. All right. Great. Thank you, David. Okay, thank you. All right. Anyone else before we move on? Otherwise, like I said, we will have a couple more opportunities to ask questions as we go through the agenda tonight. But uh, seeing there's no public hearing tonight, we'll move to item three minutes of the previous meeting. We have a bunch of minutes to approve. Mr. Chair? Yes. Motion to approve the March 4th, 2024 regular meeting, the March 7th, 2024 public hearing, the March 11th, 12th, and March 13th, 2024 special meetings. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. And yes, March has been pretty busy so far for the council. Uh, any comments, questions, changes? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Announcements and reports. Um, Mr. Chair? Yeah, you, yeah. you get to go first. Okay. All the time. Uh, <laughs> I, I attended um, several, uh, uh, you know, board and commission meetings to which I'm the liaison. I did not attend the library trustees, which was last Tuesday because we were here for our budget meeting. But I do know that it was the trustees' turn to have a session where they were giving input on the strategic planning process that our public library is now undertaking and we've talked about before. On uh, Wednesday night, I was at Conservation Commission and a couple of highlights. Uh, the signs alerting visitors to the turtle nesting areas at Tommaso Nature Park are ready. Uh, Mark DeVoe, of course, is the staff person that uh, uh, is with the Conservation Commission, has been very instrumental in that. Um, they also looked at and uh, updated uh, a number of action items that they have for Paderewski Pond. Um, the um, April meeting will be a presentation by Sustainable Connecticut. And they are going to be inviting other town boards and commissions and the town council, and that's going to be on April 10th. So I think we'll be hearing hearing about that. And they also you know, noted uh, the work that Lucas Grafton had done with the bat houses, and we're quite pleased with it. Uh, and Thursday, I was at Committee on Aging, and a couple of topics that were discussed were some new programming, uh, the fact that the transportation situation has improved with some hiring of drivers. It's such a, such a critical service that's so important. Um, the facilities improvements that were proposed in the FY25 budget, which we had talked about, including a new flooring in a section of the building. And they also noted that 2025 will be the 50th anniversary of the Plainville Senior Center. And they'll be looking to plan um, some sort of commemoration as this year goes on. 
Thank Mr. You. Chair, yes. um, I just want to take a moment to recognize uh, D'Amico Construction Company, who is a finalist this year for the Equipment World 2024 Contractor of the Year. Um, Twelve companies across the country are chosen. Um, each finalist will be honored this week during the Contractor of the Year event in Las Vegas. And... Um, while we're cheering on UConn, let's also think about D'Amico and hope that they might be the big winner. <laughs> so good job, D'Amico. <laughs> All right, thank you. Congratulations to them. Yeah. Anyone else with a announcement or a report? I'll just finish up once again. Tomorrow is, which will, you know, today's Monday, obviously, but uh, the referendum vote on the middle school project is tomorrow. Uh, Voting is from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. at the firehouse. Um, and I just want to make sure, one more reminder, just in case someone's watching between today, tonight and tomorrow. Um, hearing no other announcements or reports, we will move on to item five, appointments and resignations. We do have a few appointments this evening. Mr. Chairman? Yes, go ahead. Motion to reappoint Jennifer Bartis Early and William Ritchie to the Planning and Zoning Commission for the term ending January 2nd, 2028. Second. Motion and a second. Any comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Chairman? Go ahead. Motion to reappoint Jennifer Bartis Early to the Capital Region Council of Government Regional Planning Commission for the term ending December 31st, 2024. Second. Motion and a second. Uh, any comments or questions? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? And just before I ask, on my list, we're, I had a William Ritchie. Yeah, I said them both. Oh, did you? I, I combined I'm them. I'm sorry. I completely yes. blanked out then. That's okay. <laughs> well, thank you for correcting me. That's my good reading there. <laughs> it went so smooth. Yeah, it tells you how much I guess I'm listening. <laughs> uh, that's not good. Nice. <laughs> that's all right. My grandmother will tell me what I'm doing wrong when she sees this <laughs> uh, tomorrow night. Um, all right, so item number uh, two, we're all set. And now item number three. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion to reappoint David Dudek, William Brain, and Daniel Coolis to the Veterans Council for the term ending March 1st, 2026. Second. All right. We have a motion and a second, and I do recognize he did all three at once. Any comments or questions? <laughs> all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. And number four, please. Mr. Chairman. Yes, go ahead. Motion to appoint Renato Astolfi, 45 Bel Air Drive, as a regular member to the Aviation Commission for the unexpired term ending October 31st, 2024. Second. All right, motion and a second. Uh, any comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Is there any other appointments or reappointments to boards or commissions tonight? All right, hearing none, uh, the board chairperson had another commitment tonight. Uh, we are up to item seven, the report of the town attorney. Is there anything to report? Good evening. Is there anything to report? Good evening. Good evening. Um, no. <laughs> There's nothing to report. I went to the Big East tournament. I have <laughs> laryngitis. <laughs> and that's, that's acceptable. We understand. It was a good weekend, I'm sure, in New York. <laughs> um any questions for the town attorney? All right, we'll move on the report of the town manager. Yes, um, item one is uh, concerning element 119. You've heard the presentation of uh, the request and the reason they're before you uh, is a request for a tax fixing agreement that would be a seven year uh, term uh, for um, the uh, former um, location uh, where uh, Carlin Switch is out by the airport adjacent to the town's property and municipal airport. Uh, they uh, presented uh, a, a tremendous amount of information on, on their growth and expansion. We feel this is a, a good match and a good opportunity uh, to bring uh, a, a company, a growth company, uh, and have two different uh, locations relocate here on, under one roof. So um, the um, 
later on in, under new business, we have that item. We also have an executive session in which we've uh, staff has prepared um, information with respect to uh, assessments and numbers in terms of understanding the, the program. Uh, I've had great assistance from the town attorney, uh, from our town planner, Mark DeVoe, and economic development director, Cal Halberger, uh, been instrumental in this in bringing it and, and pulling it all together. There are a few things that we'll need to uh, discuss in executive session, uh, and I suggest that when we get to new business that we uh, just skip yep. over or hop over that yep. item, uh, reserve that for the last after after the uh, executive session. But um, I think we I will tell the, the council uh, that um, uh, in addition to the uh, assistant town manager, Andy uh, Sirioli, myself and, and Mark, and uh, we were able to and Cal to to see uh, the operation firsthand. So we went both to Cheshire and we went to Thomason uh, with the factory. So we saw the corporate offices. They were very gracious in giving us the uh, the tour and, and meeting the staff and, and the employees at both locations. Um, and they are, I can tell you, bursting at the seams uh, in their Thomaston location. So, um, but again, um, you know, there's I, I think a, a number of uh, growth opportunities for them. We're, we're excited. I, I think there's a there's a major uh, acquisition, as you know, that's a that's a very large uh, building where, where Carlin Switch currently uh, um, operates. Um, so I think this would um, be a great addition. But again, it's um, in the context of a request for a tax fixing agreement that we want to make sure that we are uh, uh, very thorough in that process. So there is some documentation that we'll need to to review and uh, and potentially take action on. But um, I've had a chance uh, to ask a lot of questions, and uh, so I, I don't know, you know, if the council has any more, but it, it is a, uh, a great opportunity, a long-term. Uh, they're investing in Plainville. Uh, we, in turn, by with a tax-fixing agreement, would be saying that we would be investing in this company as well. Uh, so I think it's a long-term play, but one that I think is going to bear a lot of fruit. All right. Is there any just uh, any questions regarding Element 119? I know we've had a chance to ask some already, but all right. Yeah. All right. So and everyone understands we'll just we'll bypass yeah. new business yeah. and come out of if we choose to make a motion, we'll come out of executive session to make any motions. Okay. All right. Next. Uh, next is item two, which is the uh, historical uh, preservation grant. Um, Cindy has been putting and working on. The state of Connecticut Library has announced that uh, Plainville will be eligible to receive a grant through the historic document preservation program in the amount of five thousand five hundred dollars, and that it would be uh, the funds would be used to administer the town uh, clerk to purchase um, additional locking cabinets to store con uh, confidential records. Uh, it's uh, uh, much needed storage space for the election materials and discharge records on file in the clerk's office. So I think you, my guess is yeah. you've seen this before yeah. uh, and that it is uh, <laughs> an annual uh, type thing, but um, it's, I think, uh, worth approving and uh, helping the uh, department with its storage and records needs. So, um, I don't know if there are any questions for that. But pretty any questions? Mm -hmm. No, nope, that one's pretty self-explanatory. Mm -hmm. All right, then item three, I'll move right in. I know it's what you've all been waiting for, which is the dashboard report. This is going to take a little bit longer, but I'll, I'll try to uh, try to get through it uh, rather quickly. But um, first page, the, the format hasn't changed. Uh, first page is uh, the town's uh, expenditure budget. And that runs uh, through February 29th. Uh, expended to date, 44,474,671. Uh, that represents 65.34%, uh, uh, which is just a, a hair over the uh, two-year average at 65.03. So everything in, in line there, it breaks further breaks down to the general government expenditure and uh, it almost pains me to say that uh, the uh, Board of Education is um, only 61% uh, expended and uh, just under their two-year average. Well, on the town side, I cannot say the same thing. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we're 71.72% and uh, almost 
one and a half or two percent over the uh, two two year average. And um, of course, I'm only joking. These are still in line with what we expect. Um, it's uh, about two percent higher due to uh, the higher payroll reflections and uh, inflationary costs. But we hope to catch them in the fourth quarter. Um, moving on to um, the uh, police uh, dispatch and overtime expenditures. I think I'm sure I'm on the same page. Yes. The uh, police overtime budget is uh, a spend through uh, February 29th. $357,622. That's uh, about 7000 under the two-year average of 365347 So um, things are in line there, and they are, are running uh, below the two-year average. So we're keeping an eye on that. Obviously, that was one of the bigger items that we looked at last year. Uh, I believe they were able to turn back some money in that overtime budget. So I think the uh, chief and the department are... are uh, doing very well with respect to uh, their their uh, budget expenditures thus far. Um, we'll see what the last, last quarter presents. Um, roadways, uh, overtime expenditure of uh, over total overtime, which is their regular overtime and their snow overtime, 107,453, uh, which is above their two-year average of 92,674 and uh, roughly about 14779 over. Uh, and obviously reflects of the uh, one, one storm or multiple storms or one long duration storm can certainly uh, skew the, the budget uh, enormously. Um, and obviously reflected over a mild winter last year. So um, it's, not, uh, it's not anything that I'm concerned about and uh, they're still under under budget at this point on with only 80 percent expended to date so uh, we'll continue to monitor that um, on the other side uh, or their counterparts building and grounds the overtime there they have expended and obviously I think we talked about the biggest thing being the uh, balloon festival overtime that skewed this so those numbers are, are reflected here uh, but they were also uh, over in their regular regular overtime obviously with the um, balloon festival but their snow budget as well uh, so I think that was a, a reflection of the fact that it was slightly underfunded in terms of, uh, of their their budget we have made those adjustments going forward and uh, and the new budget, so I think we'll be able to take care of what we see as accurate or more um, likely to happen in terms of their projection in terms of uh, overtime and and storms. So you know some some theory is you know you take a try to take a, on the storms you try to take a five year average and it you know it's just a it's a it's it's a crapshoot you never really know but you do the best you can to try and do that. Um, so we'll keep uh, an eye on that. We'll take a look at the, the numbers there, but they are over by about 27,000 in terms of their uh, overtime budget there, and we're hoping that uh, there'll be other items in the, uh, in the department that m might make up for that. Uh, on the uh, solid waste and recycling, our solid waste, I think I've been reporting, I have to go back and check this, uh, but we have been trending pretty, pretty good in terms of the uh, solid waste, whereas now we've seen that um, move above the two-year average. We had, I think, been trending below that. I've been uh, reporting on that for some time, but uh, we have now exceeded the two-year average by about 50 tons. Not a great amount, but still not under what we thought. Uh, recycling still is under the tonnage, and that's about 128 uh, tons, 128 tons less than the two-year average on the recycling side. So um, we're just gotten above the two-year average on the solid waste, uh, but still well under on the recycling. So we're okay there, and we'll keep monitoring the uh, solid waste. Next page is uh, revenues. Uh, revenues look fine um, to date uh, or through uh, February 29th, uh, $59,967,750 um, brought in in terms of revenue uh, represents 88.1 percent. The two-year average is 87.96, so we're right in line in terms of the uh, revenue. 
uh, current total revenue and current taxes, same, uh, we're tracking that, and that is uh, $51,060,675, and that is 99.41%, uh, and just over the two-year average of 9904 So uh, everything is in line in terms of the revenue, um, so nothing shocking there. Uh, our next page is the fund balance, and that is still unaudited, so the numbers have not changed there, still uh, pushing finance on, on getting that uh, done, so we'll get those numbers as soon as we can. Um, special revenue funds, recreation, uh, expenditures through February, 144867 uh, slightly above their two-year average of 50, it's, it's currently 51.66 percent. The two-year average is 46.9. Uh, and again, this is one of those uh, funds that that has, uh, uh, you know, an adjustment being made as we shake out the two-year of COVID and try to get back on, on track. But their revenues are uh, through February 29th, $94,148. Uh, that's 48%, 48.28%, and the two-year average is 48.34. I think that number is likely to go much higher as they kick off uh, the upcoming online registration process, and obviously it's going to see a little bit of a blip there. So we anticipate that coming in, so the next month's report should indicate revenues much higher than, than the two-year average. Um, expenditures with Robertson Airport are in line. Obviously, we're going through um, projects that take time to, for us to fill out the necessary application and refunds coming back. Uh, Water Pollution Control Authority is right in line. Um, their uh, expenditures are 81.5 percent. The two-year average is 80.38 percent, so right, right in line. Um, their revenues uh, are, in comparison to last year, they, they received 99.84 percent um, off from the two-year average, which was, I think, skewed. It was 113 uh, percent, and that's a reflection of the uh, investment uh, swings and the savings and losses uh, in that uh, account. So, uh, but everything in, in line with, from an expenditure standpoint, and revenues will certainly uh, catch up. Um, library fund also um, right on right online. Um, they are at uh, from a expenditure standpoint, 68.93 percent expended. Uh, the two-year average is 67.62 percent. So um, just just a hair above, uh, and their um, balance, uh, their revenues are 74.43 uh, percent. In terms of revenues over the two-year average of 69.33, and again, there's a component with uh, endowments and investments there as well. So uh, everything in line there. And then uh, the last page is the major projects report. Uh, and as I've, I've noted, and I'll note it again, I had a uh, conversation with uh, Councilman Hurley uh, about the. Uh, balances that exist uh, for uh, the town line road reconstruction that has obviously been cleared out, uh, 175277 uh, and uh, I'll point out the other uh, one in the Northwest Drive road re reconstruction also done and closed out uh, with a balance of 130 there. So uh, those two combined represent over $300,000 and uh, the question is what will happen to those funds and I'll just restate that uh, our intention is that we petition uh, the state for a reprogramming and reallocation of those into transportation related projects rather than turning the money back. Um, that we're hoping we'll have an opportunity to reprogram those funds. <laughs> um, the turf maintenance uh, program has a $227,000 balance uh, for future uh, maintenance on that. ARPA funds, I did supply a uh, copy uh, at your seats mm -hmm. uh, this evening. It's the updated version that we could have a further discussion uh, when we get to Wednesday's meeting. I think that's where it was going to come into play. Uh, so there's an update there for you. Um, and again, with those funds, uh, I think the uh, finance director had indicated that there's a December 31st obligation deadline uh, to, to have those those funds obligated. Um, so the road bond has, uh, has closed out. We're well, it hasn't closed out. We're looking for a uh, final closeout there. And then uh, Wheeler School that I mentioned as well, is, that's also a uh, function of final review. 
uh, before we see um, the last of that pot of money uh, coming back. And i sorry to say I do not have uh, uh, any indication or wild guess, uh, crystal ball, on when that would be, just hoping that uh, it's, uh, this fiscal year or next. But we shall see. And with that, that concludes uh, my financial dashboard. All right. Uh, any questions for the town manager regarding his report or anything else? Then I guess time for happenings. Time for happenings. So tomorrow marks the beginning of spring. So for those who are looking forward to starting their annual cleaning rituals, I have good news. <laughs> spring bulk pickup has been scheduled to start on Monday, April 8th, 2024, and it'll end on Monday, June 24th. Uh, as a reminder, Plainville has an on-demand policy for the collection of bulk pickup. Residents who currently have curbside waste and recycling collection are eligible to receive one bulk pickup collection per year, free of charge for acceptable large items that do not fit in your normal waste collection. Please visit the Town of Plainville website at www.plainvillect.com for a complete list of acceptable bulk items and instructions on how to request a bulk pickup. The transfer station on Granger Lane is also set to open in April, on Saturday, April 6th. The hours of operation will be on Saturdays only from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. The transfer station is for Town of Plainville residents and ID is required. No commercial vehicles or businesses are permitted to discard materials. There is a fee for disposal of items, so you can refer to the town's website under the transfer station ordinance for fees and a list of acceptable items. And if you have any questions, you can call the Public Works Administration at 860-793-0221, extension 7176. <clears throat> From the Recreation Department, they announced their summer programs. Registration starts on April 1st at 9 a.m. for Plainville residents and on April 15th for non-residents. You can visit plainvillect.recdesk.com for more information. And you can also find updates on the programs on the town's Facebook and the Plainville Recreation Department's Facebook accounts as well. CTDOT announced a new bus service connecting Plainville to Southington. Uh, this is a new bus service that began on Sunday, March 10th, and it is Bus Route 532. It is a route that connects Plainville Center and Queen Street in Southington and includes stops at Price Chopper, Stop and Shop, and Walmart. Buses will operate hourly, seven days a week. From the Plainville Public Library, and for all information on library programs, including registration, you can call the library at 860-793. 1446 or visit www.plainvillect.com slash library. On Tuesday, March 19th at 6 p.m., the Astronomical Society of Greater Hartford will host a discussion at the library called The Why and How of Solar Eclipses. Connecticut will experience a partial solar eclipse on Monday, April 8th, and each amateur astronomer who attends the event will receive a pair of ellipse glasses. On Wednesday, March 27th, at 6 p.m., the library will be showing a documentary called Feminist, What We're Thinking, the revisiting of the 1970s photos of women that captured a feminist awakening. This 2018 film explores the lives of women and examines the continued need for change. Um, this film is about an hour and a half long, and there's no registration required. A representative from the American Job Center will be at the library to help answer questions, register individuals for CT hires, and assist with resumes. They'll offer one-on-one -on -one coaching and more. There is no appointment required. This service will be offered on the following Tuesdays, March 26th, April 30th, May 28th, June 25th, from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. And finally, from the Plainville Senior Center, and for all items on the Senior Center, you can call them at 860-747-5728. All programs are free and open to the public, unless otherwise indicated. Snappy Seniors Photography on Thursday, March 21st at 10 a.m. Snappy Seniors will be matting their 8x10 photos for the group's upcoming exhibit at the Plainville Library. New members are always welcome to join. The Memory Cafe at the Senior Center on Thursday, March 21st at 2 p.m. The Memory Cafe is a warm and welcoming program for individuals with memory loss. Anyone experiencing memory loss is welcome to attend with their loved ones or caregivers. A movie matinee, The Boys in the Boat, will be featured at the Senior Center on Thursday, March 21st at 2 p.m. It's a fun afternoon with uh, popcorn. 
Pre-Diabetes and Diabetes Support Group and Education on Monday, March 25th at 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. This is a monthly Monday morning meeting. and It'll go until June 24th. Whether you are new to or you have had pre-diabetes or diabetes, you are welcome to attend and there will be updated, uh, they'll share updated information, tips and tricks and support, uh, and these sessions are open to anybody. Spring has sprung the bird feeder craft. This is open to senior center members only on Monday, March 25th at 2 p.m. The cost is $5 and it includes all supplies and you'll be joining a group of folks who will be working to create homemade uh, orange bird feeders. The Veterans Social Hour on Tuesday, March 26th at 10 a.m. This is conducted by Sherry Vo, the Veterans Liaison for the Hartford Healthcare Senior Services. This is open to all veterans over 60 and their spouses. And finally, Move Your Mind is an event on Wednesday, April 3rd at 2 p.m. You can join presenters from Arbor Rose for a free, interactive, fun presentation by experts on the latest trends in healthy eating. Participants will receive healthy recipes, samples of food, and Good Life Fitness gift certificate. Refreshments will be provided. And that is the happenings. All right. Thank you very much. Any uh, last-minute comments or questions? Hearing none, we will move now to item 9, public comments. At this point in the meeting, anyone who wishes to address the council may do so. Please step forward to the podium, give your name and address. You'll have three minutes to make your comments. The first ring says you have 30 seconds left. Second ring means you're out of time. So, Mr. Kislik. Well, howdy, town council. Howdy. Three minutes. Come on, Chris. Anyway, you know. Well, you just wasted three saying that know, comment. You, you know, gotta, you I know. I have this feeling a lot of times you really like to give me a hard time. So I'm so glad that you mentioned your grandma today. <laughs> Between your mom and your grandma, they, they treat me so nice, They're so good to me. I figure when you do that, it says they tried their best. You know, they did what they could. <laughs> You're not the first person to say that to me, so believe it or not. So it's gotta be true. And, you know, another thing you said one time that, uh, Yes, Marilyn, if I tell her what to say. I says, you should know you never tell a woman what to say. It don't work. In fact, she encourages me. She's the one who tells me to get back up here when I get kicked in the teeth by the consul or the town manager or whatever. She's the <laughs> one who told me to get this get up out. I had it for 25 years. We picked it up in Hawaii. So she says, you got to do a little change. So, oh, I guess you're never too old to change. Yeah. Now, my main thing tonight, as you all know, I'm opposed to the Renovator's new project. I just can't deal with $61.9 million for a project like that. I, everything is overpriced now. It's just, it's just way out of line. And that type of project, like I told you, being on a committee for six years for the other schools, it, there's so much waste, so much unnecessary things done. And one thing I wanted to mention, when, when they did Linden Street School, they, they threw out so many things. People showed up with trailers to take used furniture and chairs and stuff. We, we even picked up a load of them, brought them to Jeanette's Bamboo Boutique and sold them. And I think she donated the money to the handicapped children. In the high school, a word went out that electronics were throwing out. We were told that people from other school districts came in and took some of that equipment and used it in their schools. And this, this is why, you know, you have to understand, I'm not against renovating that school with new safety entrance and, you know, the heating, roof, air condition, plumbing, the whole nine yards. But I know nobody's agreeing with me the way we could have done it with the longer term maintenance, but we'll see what happens tomorrow. I'm going to be out there, not as much because it's going to be cold and windy. But I'll be out there with my sign to vote no. And if any of you would like to hold a sign with me, you're welcome. All right. Thank you. I made it in three minutes. You still got 24 seconds. I mean, you want to I talk bad about my dog or something while you're up there? You had a dog. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, have a great day tomorrow. And whichever way it comes out, it comes out. I'll live with it. And so will you. Well, we'll see you out there. I'm sure I'll be out there a little bit as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Anyone else? Marilyn, I'm not sure, or Ginny, you're, you're the only other two. Anybody? 
Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't mean to overlook you. I'm sorry. But anyone else wish to address the council tonight? Okay. See? Very brief, uh, Tom Fody, uh, 15 Bradley Street. I, the only thing I want to say is I just want to thank the council for finally giving the town a chance to vote tomorrow. Obviously, I have an opinion about how it, uh, it should go, but regardless of whether um, my view wins the day or not, I just appreciate the fact that we're, we finally have a chance for the people to have their say that has been prevented for too long, and I appreciate that this new council has uh, made sure to give us that opportunity. So thank you very much. Thank you. All right, anyone else? All right, seeing no one, we will move on. Uh, we'll obviously move on uh, past old business. There is none, so we are up to new business. Uh, we'll be returning to uh, item number one after the uh, executive session, so I'll ask for a motion on item number two, please. Mr. Chairman? Yes, go ahead. Motion to adopt a resolution entitled, Resolution Authorizing Application for Historic Preservation Grant. Second. All right, motion and a second. Any comments or questions? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Item number three. Mr. Chair. Go ahead. Motion to establish a public hearing on Monday, April 8th at 7 p.m. in the Municipal Center to hear public comment on the Town Council's fiscal year 2025 proposed budget. Second. All right, a motion and a second. Any comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries item number four. Mr. Chair. Yes, go ahead. Motion to set the location of the annual town meeting for the purpose of voting on the town council's proposed physical year 2025 budget at the Plainville Firehouse Tuesday, April, 20, April 30th, 2024 for the hours of 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Second. All right, motion and a second. Any comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, tax refunds. Mr. Chair? Go ahead. Motion to approve the tax refunds as listed on the addendum. Second. Motion and a second. Any questions on the tax refunds this evening? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, any other discussions of interest? Mr. Chairman, I have yes. just one, uh, if I could, for the council. It's more of a uh, public service announcement on the Connecticut Department of Transportation on the closing of Woodford Avenue westbound on-ramp to I-84. Uh, they will be doing drainage work, uh, and they will require the closure from uh, Tuesday, March 19th through Thursday, March 21st. Um, project will have a scheduled timeline of 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, on those dates. So just wanted the public to be aware of that. All right. So if anyone needs to go to Southington, you probably should take Route 10, <laughs> I imagine. All right. Um, any other discussions from anyone? If not, uh, item number 13, uh, ex matter appropriate for executive session. Can I have a motion, please? Mr. Chairman? Yes, go ahead. Motion to uh, go into executive session to discuss CGS 1206E and 21, oh, 210, I'm sorry, 210B5B. Second. All right, a motion and a second, and that has to do with the Connecticut general statutes that we're identifying there. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? All right, we'll go into executive session and we may be coming out of executive session to make a motion. Okay, thank you. All right, so if everyone wants to take four or five minutes, we'll meet you in the conference room in the back. <laughs> 